ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. Hey, this is James Spann. You've clicked onto the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday morning, the 16th day of July. Alabama stays in a calm weather pattern, but the tropics are pretty active, and uh, we've got something trying to brew down there in the backyard. Let's go right to the uh, Skycam shots early this morning. Another uh, clear morning, not quite as cool as yesterday, but still not bad. Most folks are down in the uh, mid to upper 60s. That's Tuscaloosa. The uh, bridge there connecting Tuscaloosa and Northport is seen from the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse. There's our Inverness Skycam. Don't you wish traffic was always that light on US 280? Now, this was taken about 5 o'clock this morning. And downtown Birmingham from the top of the Daniel Building. Dry air still in place here, and you can see the uh, little feature down there in the eastern gulf that we are watching with interest. And a convective blow-up up north. In terms of the severe weather risk today, it's up north where you typically expect it to be this time of the year. Uh, through parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Here's the QPF map. Uh, this is the expected rain valid through uh, Sunday evening, and this is suggesting the heaviest rain over East Alabama. And, you know, the key to it is it's that disturbance in the eastern Gulf. Does it move north, northeast, northwest? And uh, it sure looks like, I think, looking at model data, the conclusion is that the best chance of showers over the next five days will be east of I-65. And maybe east of U.S. 431 to the east of Alabama. We'll see. Uh, A little tricky forecast. And as you go farther west, uh, it's drier and drier. In fact, no rain expected in places like Memphis and Little Rock and Tulsa. Well, let's look at all this tropical action. There's our Gulf of Mexico system. And you can see the convective flare just to the uh, east of Tampa Bay. And there's clear rotation in that uh, that thing. Um, and I'll show you modeling on that as we go through the uh, GFS and the NAM here. And uh, we'll see how that thing behaves. Uh, sometimes with uh, systems like that, they can flare into a tropical depression one way or the other. The heaviest rain initially will be over the Florida Peninsula, no doubt about that. Here's Bertha moving uh, away from the island of Bermuda. And everybody, there's the uh, track of Bertha. That'll be headed out. By the way, this is the uh, longest-lived July tropical storm on record. That thing's been out there 13 days, and it'll be out there probably at least five more. We might be talking about that thing at Christmas. And uh, out in the uh, Atlantic, you can see 94L looking pretty good. A a good convective flare this morning as that approaches the uh, Windward Islands. And again, that's a low-latitude system. Uh, Here's a look at modeling on that. And most of the models take it right through the Caribbean. And, of course, if it can survive, uh, it might be a Gulf of Mexico system. Here's a look at the uh, shear out there across the Atlantic Basin. We do note a little uh, problem there in the central Caribbean. We wonder if it can survive that. But if it can, uh, conditions look pretty good in the northwest Caribbean and the Gulf. Uh, So it'll be interesting to watch that in coming days. And out in the eastern Atlantic, again, we've got... uh, the wave train going over Africa looks like another pretty good one is going to emerge off the coast there in a couple of days. So as always, a lot to watch in the tropics this time of the year. Let's go to modeling. This is the OZGFS, valid at 1 o'clock today at 500 millibars. And uh, you can see uh, ridging going on down here, uh, down at the surface. There's that surface low that's over Tampa Bay. And most of the rain with that, again, will stay over South Georgia and Florida. Tomorrow, the surface low just not moving all that much. Uh, it, it's kind of drifting north on the GFS, and we stay dry. And Friday, the moisture moves north, but it really keeps the, the bulk of it along and east of U.S. 431, and that's uh, Anniston and east, and really over Georgia and the Carolinas. But we'll peek at the NAM, and you can see the difference. The NAM has the, the, the thing coming up there toward Pensacola. Uh, with deeper moisture statewide. So it uh, uh, about as clear as mud on, on the ultimate motion of that thing. Uh, for the moment, we've just gone ahead and inserted the chance of scattered afternoon storms on Friday uh, without a qualifier. And as we get closer, maybe we can fine-tune that uh, as the models become clearer. And then Saturday, starting off the weekend, this is back to the GFS. The GFS has the thing moving northeast away from us, and it has us bone dry 
And again, we're going to mention the chance of an afternoon shower storm right now just because of the tremendous model inconsistency. And then Sunday looks uh, relatively dry. And Monday of next week looks uh, pretty typical for summer. That would suggest maybe a storm in spots. And then Tuesday of next week, same deal. Pretty typical summertime look. End of the forecast period and the end of the month is July 31st. Pretty good-looking trough over eastern Canada. Got a 588 ridge down here, and again, that looks uh, warm and muggy with somebody somewhere getting a uh, thunderstorm. Pretty uh, standard summertime stuff there. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 today. And, of course, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and God bless. Weather, 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 weather.